Well, Carradage claims that in 1996, a senior U.S. diplomat to the Balkans then, Richard Holbrook, offered him immunity from prosecution. He said the agreement was signed during peace negotiations in the region, granting him immunity if he disappeared from the public eye. The alleged text of the document was published last year in a Serbian newspaper, but Richard Holbrook has denied the claim, and the Hague Tribunal has refused to recognize the deal. Thanks, well, for more on the uh, Radovan Karadzic trial, our correspondent Dina Gusovsky and journalist Sneboya Malik joins us now uh, from our Washington, D.C. studio. Uh, evening to you, Dina. Now, the former Bosnian Serb leader uh, once said, didn't he, that the United States want him dead, unquote. How's that trial perceived in America? Hi there, Kev. Well, you know, Crowder just does have an opportunity uh, to go back to that court tomorrow, but his lawyers say he's not likely to do so. He says he didn't have enough time to prepare the case in the first place. But if he's trying to prove his innocence, Americans are wondering why is he avoiding this altogether? Well, joining me to discuss Nabojša Malic, he is a journalist and a contributor to Antiwar.com. Thank you so much for being here. So. If he's trying to, to prove that he's not, in fact, guilty, then why doesn't he give it a chance? Why doesn't he show up? I mean, why is he kind of boycotting this altogether? Well, there's a variety of reasons that he's mentioned and some of the that are readily apparent. Um, first of all, his indictment, uh, he claims, was political. And he has plenty of circumstantial evidence to, to prove that, given that it came at the moment that the U.S. administration and the effort led by Ambassador Holbrook were trying to bypass the Bosnian Serbs altogether and talk directly with Belgrade. Um, and it, it was at that point in time that he and General Mladic were indicted on um, charges that weren't really elaborated on. And his, his final indictment um, was just uh, put in maybe three months ago, just very recently, because it had to be revised and a lot of it had to be trimmed out. Um, so he hasn't really seen what he's being charged with, let alone had a chance to read any of the million pages of documents that he has to deal with to prepare his defense. Uh, as for why he's not, uh, he could have just picked legal counsel, um, as with many other defendants there, but the early experiences of Serb defendants at The Hague uh, have shown that the legal counsel, either hired or paid by the tribunal, did an absolutely terrible job of representing their clients and allowing all sorts of terrible precedents to be established. So he doesn't trust an official counsel. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Richard Holbrook because, of course, there are allegations uh, that he went to Kraudic and said, sign a date and agreement, we'll give you immunity, and then, you know, he kind of disappeared, got captured, brought to The Hague. I mean, what do you think about these allegations? Because they are denied by the Americans. Do you think that, that it, that's true, that, that Holbrook did have some kind of secret deal with him that apparently he didn't, you know, follow up on or didn't complete his part of the promise? Well, as another commentator said a few months ago when that question first surfaced, uh, trying to hope for a gentleman's agreement with Richard Holbrook shouldn't really work because Holbrook's not a gentleman, in his words, not mine. Uh, but the, there's been persistent rumors ever since 1995 that this was indeed uh, a, a deal made with Karadzic in order for him to fade away from Bosnian politics. He did disappear in 1996, um, leaving um, the Dayton process to... Um, take its course. Uh, he, it was completely a, a, a complete mystery as to where he might have been for years and years and years until uh, the surprise capture in Belgrade last uh, July. And um, I have to admit that um, a lot of Balkan watchers, myself included, have been a little baffled uh, by Karadzic's insistence on this deal because the tribunal has said, well, why would we be obligated to honor any of this? But I think what he's trying to prove by invoking this agreement is that the tribunal has always been a political instrument of the United States government and its allies. And the fact that Richard Holbrook allegedly made this promise suggest, would suggest that uh, it was the U.S. government which dictated who gets indicted, who gets uh, set free, uh, who gets the charges dropped, etc. And I think that's what Mr. Karadzic is trying to prove. So compare his case with Milosevic, because do you think that he's afraid that he's going to suffer the same fate that Milosevic did? Of course, uh, he died while uh, while in prison. Yes, um, there's definitely, he has, Mr. Karadzic has specifically said on several occasions that uh, he fears being killed at the tribunal. Um, Mr. Milosevic is not the only uh, Serb defendant who has died in detention. There's been several. 
Um, his death was probably most mysterious and most high profile, um, given that uh, his trial had just adjourned without the prosecution able to prove anything that it set out to prove, and it launched pretty much a kitchen sink indictment against him, uh, charging him of everything under the sun. Uh, and Mr. Milosevic has just finished his defense case, which was plagued by obstruction from the court, uh, and all of a sudden found dead in his hell. And Mr. Karadzic is trying to avoid that fate, uh, but I think he also believes himself, and in my opinion correctly, that he is being a surrogate Milosevic at this point, because Milosevic died without a verdict of guilty, which is necessary uh, for the backers of the tribunal mm -hmm. to explain their actions in the Balkans in the 1990s. Because if it was, wasn't all the Serbs' fault, then the mainstream version of history, the official version of history, doesn't hold water. And so they have to find him guilty regardless of the facts in the case. And he's aware of that. And he's going to try to attack that motive as well as the indictment itself. Talk about what's going on in the region right now. It seems like the ethnic tensions are boiling over in that region. Could it have an effect on the trial and vice versa? Honestly, it's very difficult to, uh, to um, put into context the, the trial and its effects in Bosnia. Um, it, it's more likely that the trial is influencing events in Bosnia than the other way around. Uh, what's going on right now is for the past three years, ever since the proposed constitutional reforms were rejected by uh, a coalition led by the Bosnian Muslims, um, the American-sponsored constitutional reform, um, there's been a severe crisis at the level of the Bosnian central government in which the Serbs, the Serb representatives are pretty much obstructing any law that they suspect, suspect might be limiting their constitutional autonomy, which is more or less all of them. And this has stalled many processes, this has disturbed many um, attempts of the Bosnian government to move towards European integration. But it hasn't really done much harm to the Bosnian Serb half of the country, which is managing itself quite decently. It has its problems, but it's managing itself, even by admission from the Muslims and Croats, far more efficiently um, and with far less economic and political and social upheaval than the Federation. That's an interesting point, but I think people are still concerned about uh, violence and then more... Um, there are you know. some concerns about violence, yes. Uh, I would not go as far to say that a, a new outbreak of hostilities is imminent. Mm -hmm. um, maybe slightly more likely than last year but definitely not imminent. I think it's part of the atmosphere that's trying to be projected by some circles in the West that are desperate for some sort of diplomatic success in the Balkans to uh, cover up some of the failures elsewhere. Well, I want to thank you so much for your insight. Fascinating discussion here. Naboy Shamalic here with me in the studios in Washington, D.C., Kevin. But for now... Back to you in Moscow. Yeah, thanks for that, Dana. Just reminding our viewers again on that uh, top news line here, that genocide trial of Radovan Karadzic, postponed for 24 hours. But uh, that coverage from us here at RT picking up, of course, tomorrow and also online at RT.com.